Hey guys, Dakota here from Basement Biotech. Just did a little bit of cleaning and reorganization of the lab space that I have to work with. So, I'm just going to go through and give a quick tour of what we have here and what I generally do. Just got a bunch of new consumable supplies from an old professor, which was very nice. So, it pays to stay on the good side of your professors. Um, if they know that you work hard in the lab, and they'll tend to sometimes help you out if they're going to be throwing stuff away. In my case, part of my school was being renovated and there's a whole bunch of old stuff that had been basically sitting in the sun so long that the bag started to actually disintegrate. So we have some culture tubes up here, some cell culture plates back here, some falcon tubes. Got a couple BioRad kits. I think they're GFP purification. Some uh, one or two liter sterilized sealed media bottles, some pasture pipettes, long pasture pipettes, short glass pipettes. Some of these are pre sterilized, two alcohol lamps, some small petri dishes and cell culture dishes, and an uh, assortment of extra tips. Here is a thermocycler I got from one of my old professors as well, and this actually is having a problem heating right now, so I might have to replace the element, but this would be really nice to get this going because it's about the air base, so before I went off to work in the morning I could set up a reaction, and this machine can hold at 4 degrees centigrade for the rest of the day until I get home and have time to run a gel. Um, got a micro centrifuge Eppendorf. I highly recommend looking for these on eBay. Um, I got this one and this one, one of them for $50, one of them for $75. They both work absolutely perfectly. Uh, I was really surprised. Most of them go for $300 plus on eBay. Um, but if you look around, you can get a good deal. Uh, arrangement of P1000s through P20s. Still don't have a P10, uh, which I really want for doing PCR and smaller volume stuff. A couple uh, streakers for bacterial plates, chem wipes, stir plate, uh, single speed vortexer, which is nice to have, a uh, small microfuge, which is nice to just pellet stuff uh, that doesn't require the high 14, 15 K that the, the Eppendorf machines can get to. Some racks, test tube racks, freezer boxes, old power supply. Uh, multimeters are just good to have around. This is a nice scale I got off Amazon for $20. Measures down to milligrams, which is pretty nice. Digital thermometer. Again, you can get these off eBay for pretty cheap. Centigrade, light, and Fahrenheit readings. And over here, we have another type of PCR machine. This is the first one I bought off eBay for $50. This one is actually based on a halogen light and inside the light will turn on and you'll have basically a, a vortex, something spinning to rotate the air pretty quickly. Um, so the benefit of this machine is that it has much faster ramp times than the Peltier based unit over there. <clears throat> the downside is you do have to use mineral oil on this because there's no such thing as a heated lid in this particular case and this can't hold at 4 degrees centigrade so you have to basically be around when your reaction's done. Uh, two gel boxes again one was donated by a nice professor. This one we bought <clears throat> um, offline from IO Rodeo. It actually turned out okay the worst part was probably soldering it all together with this acrylic welding basically not solder weld it because um, as you can see if you're not careful you'll get stains like this where the acrylic weld sits and just basically burns through stuff so it doesn't look very clean also ours leaked for about two days until we took time and just refilled cracks refilled cracks tried it again tried it again so that was kind of a pain two blenders there I wanted to try and turn into a micro centrifuge but Instead of having stuff spinning around on those at high speed and potentially flying off and hurting me, get those two real things off eBay for $50, $75 respectively. And uh, that works out a lot better. So up here I just have some basic chemicals that you can get from grocery stores, vinegar, acetic acid, stump out, 
A lot of people assume this is potassium nitrate. That's not always the case. This is sodium metabisulfate, strong reducing agent. Magnesium sulfate, uh, otherwise known as Epsom salt. I have a couple oxidizers here that I got off homesciencetools.com. Keep these in secondary storage with hydrogen peroxide. It's always good, even if you're not in a real laboratory, to just practice safe laboratory practices. I think it's our job as amateur scientists, chemists, biologists to just follow the rules and make sure you're performing all the experiments that you can safely and so that you don't cause any threat to yourself, your property, or especially your neighbors and the people that might not know what you're doing or aren't involved. Secondary containers for just sulfuric and glacial acetic acid. Um, Home Science Tools is really great. Uh, I'll, I'll plug them now. They're one of the few companies along with HMS Beagle and a couple others um, United Nuclear that will sell you small amounts of chemicals which are great because I don't need 100 grams of oxidizers you know five or ten grams for an experiment is nice and I don't need half a liter of concentrated sulfuric acid if I can buy 30 mils that's fine for small scale reactions that this lab is more suited for calcium chloride for transformations um, some random stuff, phenyl phenylphthalein indicator, super glue, got to have the periodic table chart. Here's some old copper acetate crystals I was making. They looked a lot prettier uh, when they were first made. Um, here's some stuff for microscope, standing in slides. I have crystal violet, methylene blue, saffronin O, slides, uh, cover slips. Here are two graphite rods I took out of a pencil. Uh, I'm very proud of this because it took a long time to actually get the graphite rod out without the pencil breaking. So you can use those for neat experiments uh, with copper in solution to say copper plate zinc coins. Here's some random things that I got at a mineral store once, some copper ore and a piece of sulfur. This is neat to break chunks off and burn because it burns bright blue. Um, got some other random stuff, smaller Meyer flasks, or the Meyer flask with a sidearm vacuum adapter with a Buchner funnel. Buchner funnel. Filter paper is good to filter out crude extracts. Um, these are good, you can get them at a dollar store. Uh, just cheap, cheap way spoons basically. Again, you can get a whole set of funnels for a dollar at the dollar store. A whole set of borosilicate glass beakers as well as Eller Meyer flasks, again off home science tools. They are borosilicate, they're not high quality Pyrex, but some, I mean, these do have pretty nice thick lips, and in some cases you can find bubbles in the glass, which you wouldn't find in higher quality glass, but for a tenth of the price, uh, they're okay. Graduated cylinders, watch glasses, crucible, um, mortar and pestle. Again, you can get a lot of good stuff offline for pretty cheap. If you look, lab fridge, um, and I apologize, this isn't really how I set up my organic distillations. Um, this is just a basic set I got at a flea market. You can get a lot of stuff at flea markets. Um, and this was again bought at like a Ocean State job lot really cheap. This is a cheap aquarium pump, and if you cut a uh, gallon of water, you can put your aquarium pump in there. Hook up this cheap tubing um, to the aquarium pump and use that to cool your condenser into your reception flask. I didn't even have a ring stand um, or a rod stand so I used a piece of like wood that I found outside. Um, this is my sort of ghetto ring stand attachment. I put some twist ties around here to hold the still head. Um, it's good to have aluminum foil around. If you're doing hard distillations, you can decrease radiative, radiative heat loss by wrapping your things in tin foil. Goggles. Wear these if I'm doing biology. Wear these if I'm working with uh, acids or anything of that nature. And that's another thing that people should just always be aware of. Plan your experiments based on what equipment you have, not the other way around. So in this particular case, the only organic solvent that I even have in my house right now is isopropyl alcohol and that's just for mainly biological reasons. I don't get involved at this stage with organic solvent distillations or anything of that nature just because I don't think I have the necessary equipment. I mean I don't have a fume hood, I still need a fire extinguisher down here. So just be smart and responsible with what you plan. 
so in my particular case I'll do a lot of steam distillations because basically if anything were to break or happen you're just dealing with with water and so it's easier to clean up and safer here's the ongoing fungal growth experiment which is pretty cool some potato potato dextrose in there and so yeah that's that's the lab I've been doing a lot of PCR reactions um, or we've been doing a lot of PCR reactions and stuff's going well and hopefully gonna get some more equipment and add it to the bench if you have any questions about where to get stuff uh, there's a couple websites that I'll put in the video comments and hopefully that will help you out thanks bye